The Frankish civilization stands as a cornerstone of European history, marking a pivotal period in the evolution of Western civilization. Emerging from the ashes of the Roman Empire, the Franks, a Germanic tribe, carved out a kingdom that would profoundly shape the political, cultural, and religious landscape of medieval Europe. The roots of Frankish civilization trace back to the early medieval period, a time of great turmoil and upheaval in Europe. As the Roman Empire crumbled, waves of Germanic tribes migrated across the continent, seeking new lands and opportunities. Among these tribes, the Franks emerged as a dominant force, establishing a kingdom in what is now modern-day France and Germany. Under the leadership of figures like Clovis and Charlemagne, the Franks expanded their territory, forging alliances, waging wars, and consolidating power across vast swaths of Europe. From the conquests of Clovis to the grandeur of Charlemagne's empire, the Frankish realm reached unprecedented heights of influence and prestige, becoming the dominant political force in Western Europe. Yet Frankish civilization was more than just a military and political power. It was a vibrant and dynamic society, characterized by its rich cultural heritage, its fervent Christian faith, and its innovative political institutions. From the Carolingian Renaissance to the spread of Christianity, the Franks left an indelible mark on the intellectual, artistic, and religious life of medieval Europe. The origins of the Franks lie within the broader context of the Migration Period, a tumultuous era in European history characterized by the movement of various Germanic tribes across the continent. As the Western Roman Empire faced internal decay and external threats, waves of Germanic peoples migrated from their homelands in search of new opportunities and resources. The Franks were among the Germanic tribes that ventured westward during this period of upheaval. Originating from the region that is now modern-day Germany, the Franks migrated into Gaul, the Roman province encompassing much of present-day France and parts of neighboring countries. The Franks belonged to the broader group of Germanic peoples, who shared linguistic and cultural ties but were divided into numerous distinct tribes and communities. The migration of the Franks into Gaul was gradual and occurred over several centuries, beginning in the late Roman period and continuing into the early Middle Ages. As they settled in Gaul, the Franks interacted with the Roman population and absorbed elements of Roman culture and civilization, contributing to the gradual fusion of Germanic and Roman traditions. The pivotal figure in the early history of the Franks was Clovis, Clodovac, who ruled from around 481 to 511 AD and is widely regarded as the founder of the Merovingian dynasty. Clovis was the son of Childeric I, a Frankish chieftain who had established himself as a significant figure among the Franks. Clovis succeeded his father as king of the Salian Franks, one of the prominent Frankish tribes, and embarked on a series of military campaigns to expand his realm and assert his authority over neighboring tribes and territories. One of Clovis's most notable achievements was his victory over the Roman general Syagrius at the Battle of Soissons in 486 Common Era which marked the final collapse of Roman authority in northern Gaul. Clovis's most significant conversion to Christianity occurred around 496 Common Era when, according to tradition, he embraced the Catholic faith after seeking divine assistance in battle. His conversion to Christianity was a strategic move that not only aligned him with the religion of his Roman subjects but also garnered him support from the influential Catholic Church. Under Clovis's leadership, the Merovingian dynasty reached its zenith, establishing the Frankish kingdom as a dominant political and military power in Western Europe. Clovis's conquests and alliances laid the foundations for the Frankish realm, which would continue to expand and evolve in the centuries that followed under the reign of his descendants. The Merovingian dynasty, named after Clovis's legendary ancestor Merovec, ruled the Frankish kingdom for nearly three centuries, from the late 5th century to the mid-8th century. Despite their early successes, the Merovingian kings gradually lost power and influence over time, as their authority was challenged by ambitious nobles and rival factions within the Frankish realm. Clovis's legacy endured long after his death, shaping the identity and destiny of the Frankish people and laying the groundwork for the rise of the Carolingian dynasty which would usher in a new era of Frankish power and influence in medieval Europe. 
The Carolingian dynasty, named after Charlemagne's illustrious ancestor Charles Martel, emerged as the dominant political force in the Frankish realm during the 8th century. The rise of the Carolingians marked a pivotal moment in Frankish history, as they ascended to power and laid the foundations for a new era of Frankish greatness. Pippin the Short, also known as Pippin III, played a central role in the establishment of the Carolingian dynasty. As the son of Charles Martel, Pippin inherited a realm that was already on the path to greatness, thanks to his father's military victories and political acumen. Upon Charles Martel's death in 741 Common Era, Pippin assumed the title of Mayor of the Palace, effectively becoming the de facto ruler of the Frankish Kingdom. Pippin's reign was characterized by a series of ambitious military campaigns and political maneuvers aimed at consolidating his power and expanding the borders of the Frankish realm. One of his most notable achievements was his support for the papacy in Rome, which sought protection from the Lombards in Italy. In response to the papal appeal, Pippin launched a military campaign against the Lombards and eventually defeated them, paving the way for the establishment of the Papal States and solidifying the Frankish king's authority over Italy. In recognition of his support for the papacy and his role in defending the church, Pope Stephen II anointed Pippin as King of the Franks in 751 Common Era, effectively legitimizing his rule and laying the groundwork for the establishment of the Carolingian dynasty. Pippin's coronation marked the end of the Merovingian dynasty and the beginning of a new chapter in Frankish history. The most illustrious figure of the Carolingian dynasty was Charlemagne, also known as Charles the Great, who reigned as King of the Franks from 768 to 814 Common Era. Charlemagne's reign represents a golden age in Frankish history, characterized by military conquests, political reforms, and cultural achievements that transformed the Frankish realm into the preeminent power in Western Europe. Charlemagne's military campaigns were instrumental in expanding the borders of the Frankish kingdom and solidifying his authority over vast territories. Through a series of wars against neighboring kingdoms and tribes, Charlemagne extended Frankish rule into Italy, Spain, and Germany creating a vast empire that stretched from the North Sea to the Mediterranean and from the Atlantic Ocean to the Danube River. Yet Charlemagne's legacy extends far beyond his military conquests. He was also a visionary ruler who sought to create a unified Christian empire that would serve as a bulwark against the forces of chaos and barbarism. To this end, Charlemagne embarked on a program of political and cultural reforms aimed at strengthening the institutions of government and promoting learning and scholarship throughout his realm. One of Charlemagne's most enduring achievements was his support for the Carolingian Renaissance, a period of intellectual and cultural revival that saw a flourishing of art, literature, and learning in the Frankish kingdom. Under Charlemagne's patronage, scholars and scribes labored tirelessly to preserve and transmit the wisdom of the ancient world, laying the foundations for the intellectual and cultural achievements of the medieval period. In recognition of his contributions to Christianity and Western civilization, Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne as Emperor of the Romans on Christmas Day in the year 800 Common Era symbolizing the revival of the Roman Empire in the West and cementing Charlemagne's reputation as the father of Europe. The administration of the Carolingian Empire, under the rule of Charlemagne and his successors, was characterized by a complex system of governance that blended elements of Roman administration with traditional Germanic customs. At its zenith, the Carolingian Empire encompassed vast territories stretching across Western Europe, from modern-day France and Germany to Italy and beyond. Central to the administration of the Carolingian Empire was the concept of royal power and authority, which was vested in the person of the king or emperor. Charlemagne and his successors ruled as absolute monarchs, wielding considerable authority over their subjects and territories. The king was responsible for maintaining law and order, dispensing justice, and defending the realm against external threats. To assist him in the task of governance, the king relied on a cadre of trusted advisors and officials, who helped him administer the affairs of state and oversee the various administrative functions of the empire. The king's court, known as the royal palace, served as the center of political and administrative power, where important decisions were made, 
laws were enacted, and disputes were settled. The Carolingian Empire was divided into administrative units known as counties, each governed by a royal official known as a count. The count was responsible for collecting taxes, maintaining order, and enforcing the king's will within his jurisdiction. Counts were appointed by the king and served at his pleasure, ensuring a high degree of central control over local affairs. In addition to the counts, the Carolingian Empire was also divided into ecclesiastical jurisdictions, with bishops and abbots exercising authority over religious and secular matters within their dioceses and monasteries. The church played a crucial role in the administration of the empire, providing spiritual guidance, education, and social services to the populace. Despite the centralized nature of Carolingian rule, the empire was not immune to the forces of decentralization and fragmentation that characterized the medieval period. As the Carolingian Empire expanded and grew in size, maintaining central control over distant provinces and territories became increasingly difficult. One of the key factors contributing to the decentralization of the Carolingian Empire was the rise of feudalism, a system of social and economic organization based on landholding and loyalty. Under feudalism, land was the primary source of wealth and power, and those who held land owed allegiance and military service to their feudal lord in exchange for protection and support. As the Carolingian Empire expanded, the king granted vast tracts of land to loyal vassals and nobles in exchange for their loyalty and military service. These grants of land, known as fiefs, formed the basis of the feudal system, creating a web of reciprocal obligations and relationships between lords and vassals. Over time, the feudal system gave rise to a decentralized system of governance, as local lords and nobles asserted greater autonomy and independence within their own domains. The weakening of central authority, combined with the rise of powerful regional rulers and feudal lords, contributed to the fragmentation of the Carolingian Empire and the eventual collapse of Carolingian rule. By the end of the 9th century, the Carolingian Empire had splintered into a patchwork of smaller kingdoms and principalities, each ruled by its own lord or noble family. The era of Carolingian unity and centralization had come to an end, giving way to a new era of feudalism and regionalism that would shape the political landscape of medieval Europe for centuries to come. The Carolingian Renaissance, which flourished during the reign of Charlemagne and his successors, represented a period of intellectual and cultural revival in the Frankish kingdom. Inspired by the classical traditions of ancient Rome and Greece, Charlemagne sought to promote learning and scholarship throughout his empire, establishing a network of schools, libraries, and scriptoria where scholars could study and transcribe ancient texts. One of the most important figures of the Carolingian Renaissance was Alcuin of York, a scholar and educator who served as Charlemagne's chief advisor on matters of education and culture. Under Alcan's guidance, the Carolingian court became a center of learning and intellectual exchange, attracting scholars and thinkers from across Europe. The Carolingian Renaissance witnessed a revival of classical learning and literature, as scholars sought to recover and preserve the wisdom of the ancient world. Texts by authors such as Virgil, Cicero, and Boethius were painstakingly copied and studied, laying the foundations for the intellectual achievements of the medieval period. One of the most enduring legacies of the Carolingian Renaissance was the production of illuminated manuscripts, which served as both repositories of knowledge and works of art. Skilled scribes and artists labored tirelessly to create illuminated manuscripts, embellishing the pages with intricate designs, elaborate initials, and vibrant colors. The production of illuminated manuscripts reached its zenith during the Carolingian era, as the demand for books and educational materials grew in response to Charlemagne's efforts to promote literacy and education. Monastic scriptoria, where monks and scribes worked to copy and illuminate manuscripts, became centers of artistic and intellectual activity, preserving and transmitting the cultural heritage of the ancient world to future generations. The Carolingian era also witnessed significant developments in architecture and monasticism, as Charlemagne and his successors sought to promote piety and religious devotion throughout their realm. Monasteries played a crucial role in the religious and cultural life of the Carolingian Empire, 
serving as centers of prayer, learning, and charitable works. Under the patronage of the Carolingian rulers, monasteries flourished, as monks and nuns devoted themselves to lives of prayer, contemplation, and scholarship. Monastic communities became repositories of knowledge and learning, preserving and transmitting the cultural heritage of the Christian tradition to future generations. The architecture of the Carolingian period was characterized by a revival of classical forms and motifs, as architects and builders sought to emulate the grandeur of ancient Roman and Byzantine architecture. Carolingian churches and monasteries were often built in the Romanesque style, with thick walls, rounded arches, and ornate decoration, reflecting the influence of classical design principles. The conversion of the Franks to Christianity represented a watershed moment in Frankish history, as the pagan tribes of Northern Europe embraced the faith of their Roman neighbors. The conversion of Clovis, the founder of the Merovingian dynasty, marked the beginning of the Christianization of the Frankish kingdom, as Clovis and his followers were baptized into the Catholic faith. The conversion of the Franks to Christianity had profound implications for the religious and cultural life of the Frankish realm. Christianity became the dominant religion of the Franks, shaping their beliefs, practices, and social institutions. The Church played a central role in Frankish society, providing spiritual guidance, moral instruction, and social services to the populace. The relationship between the Church and the Frankish state was complex and multifaceted, as both institutions sought to assert their authority and influence within Frankish society. The Church wielded considerable power and influence, as it served as the spiritual and moral authority in the Frankish realm providing guidance and counsel to the rulers and the ruled alike. At the same time, the Frankish kings sought to assert their authority over the church, using their political and military power to influence ecclesiastical affairs and promote their own interests. Charlemagne, in particular, sought to strengthen the ties between the church and the state, enacting laws and regulations designed to promote the welfare of the church and ensure its loyalty to the crown. The relationship between the church and the state was characterized by a delicate balance of power and authority, as both institutions sought to navigate the complexities of medieval politics and society. While tensions and conflicts occasionally arose between the church and the state, the two institutions ultimately worked together to promote the common good and advance the cause of Christian civilization. Monasticism played a central role in Frankish society, serving as a bastion of piety, learning, and cultural preservation. Monasteries and convents were founded throughout the Frankish realm, providing refuge for those seeking to devote themselves to lives of prayer, contemplation, and service. Monastic communities became centers of learning and scholarship, as monks and nuns devoted themselves to the study of scripture, theology, and the liberal arts. Monasteries housed libraries, scriptoria, and schools where monks and scribes worked tirelessly to copy and illuminate manuscripts, preserving the literary and intellectual heritage of the Christian tradition. In addition to their role as centers of learning, monasteries also played a crucial role in the economic and social life of the Frankish kingdom. Monastic estates produced food, clothing, and other goods essential for the sustenance of the community, while monastic hospitals provided care and comfort to the sick and needy. The Treaty of Verdun, signed in 843 Common Era, marked a significant turning point in the history of the Carolingian Empire and the broader trajectory of European history. Following the death of Emperor Louis the Pious, the only surviving son of Charlemagne, the empire was plunged into a bitter succession crisis, as Louis's three sons vied for control over their father's vast domains. The Treaty of Verdun, negotiated among Louis's sons, divided the Carolingian Empire into three distinct realms, the West Frankish Kingdom, modern-day France, the East Frankish Kingdom, modern-day Germany, and the Middle Kingdom, comprising territories in present-day Italy and the Low Countries. Each of Louis's sons was granted a portion of the empire, which they ruled as independent kingdoms. The division of the Carolingian Empire laid the foundations for the emergence of distinct European nation-states, as the once unified realm fragmented into smaller kingdoms and principalities. The Treaty of Verdun also reflected the growing centrifugal forces that were tearing apart the fabric of Carolingian unity, 
as regional rulers and feudal lords asserted greater autonomy and independence within their own domains. The decline and fragmentation of the Carolingian Empire were further exacerbated by external threats and invasions, chief among them being the Viking raids that swept across Europe during the 9th and 10th centuries. The Vikings, seafaring warriors from Scandinavia, launched devastating attacks on coastal towns and cities, plundering wealth, capturing slaves, and spreading fear and destruction wherever they went. The Viking invasions posed a formidable challenge to the stability and security of the Carolingian realms, as local authorities struggled to repel the invaders and protect their subjects from harm. Despite efforts to fortify towns and build defensive structures, the Vikings continued to wreak havoc across Europe, exploiting the political and military weaknesses of the fragmented Carolingian kingdoms. The Viking invasions also had profound cultural and economic consequences, disrupting trade routes, destroying settlements, and destabilizing political institutions. The legacy of the Viking raids would endure long after the Carolingian Empire had faded into obscurity, shaping the course of European history and leaving an indelible mark on the collective memory of the medieval world. As the Carolingian Empire declined, regional powers and feudal lords began to assert greater autonomy and independence within their own domains, further fragmenting the political landscape of medieval Europe. Local rulers and nobles seized upon the opportunity to expand their territories, consolidate their power, and assert their authority over neighboring lands. Feudalism, a system of social and economic organization based on landholding and loyalty, became increasingly entrenched throughout Europe, as vassals pledged their allegiance to local lords in exchange for protection and support. The fragmentation of political authority and the rise of feudalism contributed to a decentralization of power, as local rulers and nobles exercised greater control over their own affairs. The rise of regional powers and feudal fragmentation transformed the political map of Europe, giving rise to a patchwork of independent kingdoms, principalities, and city-states. The era of Carolingian unity and centralization had come to an end, giving way to a new era of feudalism and regionalism that would shape the course of European history for centuries to come. The legacy of Frankish civilization looms large in the annals of European history, shaping the political, cultural, and social landscape of the continent for centuries to come. The Franks played a crucial role in the emergence of medieval Europe, laying the foundations for the development of modern nation-states and the evolution of European institutions. The political legacy of the Franks can be seen in the emergence of distinct European kingdoms and principalities, as the once unified Carolingian Empire fragmented into smaller, independent realms. The Frankish kingdoms provided the template for the development of feudalism, a system of governance that would shape the political and social order of medieval Europe. The Franks made significant contributions to the development of European law, language, and literature, leaving an indelible mark on the cultural heritage of the continent. The Frankish legal code, known as the Salic Law, served as the basis for medieval legal systems throughout Europe, influencing the development of feudal law and the emergence of modern legal principles. The Franks also played a crucial role in the development of the French language, which evolved from the Frankish dialects spoken by the early medieval Franks. The French language, with its rich literary tradition and cultural heritage, remains one of the most widely spoken languages in the world today, a testament to the enduring legacy of Frankish civilization. In addition to their contributions to law and language, the Franks also made significant contributions to literature and the arts, producing epic poems, chronicles, and works of religious devotion that continue to captivate audiences around the world. The literary and artistic achievements of the Franks reflect the vibrancy and creativity of medieval European culture, inspiring generations of writers, artists, and thinkers to explore the depths of human experience and imagination. The cultural and religious heritage of the Franks is enshrined in the churches, cathedrals, and monasteries that dot the landscape of Europe, serving as reminders of the enduring legacy of Frankish civilization. The Frankish kings and rulers were devout Christians, who sought to promote piety, religious devotion, and cultural renewal throughout their realms. The legacy of Frankish Christianity can be seen in the majestic cathedrals and monasteries that were built throughout the Frankish kingdoms, 
as well as in the religious art and iconography that adorned these sacred spaces. The Franks also played a crucial role in the spread of Christianity throughout Europe, as missionaries and evangelists carried the message of Christ to the farthest corners of the continent. The cultural and religious heritage of the Franks continues to resonate with believers and scholars alike, as they seek to uncover the mysteries of the medieval world and explore the depths of Frankish civilization. From the grandeur of Charlemagne's empire to the piety of Frankish monasticism, the legacy of the Franks endures as a testament to the enduring power of human creativity, faith, and spirit. As we look to the future, the study of Frankish civilization remains as relevant and vital as ever, offering valuable insights into the complexities of medieval Europe and the enduring legacies of the past. Future directions in Frankish studies may include interdisciplinary approaches that draw on insights from history, archaeology, linguistics, and art history to shed new light on the lives and experiences of the Franks and their contemporaries. Moreover, the study of Frankish civilization provides an opportunity to explore broader themes and questions related to the nature of power, authority, and identity in medieval Europe. By examining the political, social, and cultural dynamics of Frankish society, we gain a deeper understanding of the forces that shaped the medieval world and continue to influence our own. In conclusion, the study of Frankish civilization offers us a window into the past and a mirror to the present reminding us of the enduring power of human ingenuity, resilience, and spirit. As we continue to explore the mysteries of the medieval world and uncover the treasures of Frankish civilization, we are reminded of the timeless lessons and enduring legacies of the Franks, whose journey continues to inspire and captivate us to this day.